Hello there everybody, Sam Strains here, welcome back to the railway and welcome to a very special review. For the first time I'm going to be unboxing one of Hornby's Centenary products. <laughs> So today's loco has literally only just arrived. The postman dropped it off around 10 minutes ago and I've come straight up the loft to film my initial reaction to it. The loco is this. It is the special Hornby Centenary Smoky Joe locomotive in the period packaging, as you can see, just as this loco would have looked more or less in 1980 when it was first released. I bought this from Derails Models for a very reasonable price. In fact, the whole pricing for this is quite interesting. It's actually one pound cheaper on Hornby's website than the standard Hornby Smoky Joe, as you can see here in the railroad range. And don't forget this one, not only is it gonna become a very special collector's piece because they're not making that many, but it's also got an enhanced livery and extra detail as well. So the, the price seems very, very reasonable. Just like the brand new Sam's Trains 2020 shirts that I've just got going in the store, they say on the front, I'm not a trainer enthusiast and then on the back it's revealed that you're a model train enthusiast so if you like the look of those please use the links below and check those out you can support the channel and get a cool shirt as well for now though let's get Smokey Joe out find out what this is like and this will be my first time opening the box okay so yes the Hornby Smokey Joe an absolute classic model I know loads and loads of people started out in the hobby with this as their first ever loco back in the 1980s and so I think it's just a lovely thing that Hornby have brought this back because there will be a lot of people that have fond memories of these. And no doubt seeing it in the original packaging like this will bring back loads of memories for people like that. And by the way, I do have affiliate links down in the description if you want to pick one of these up at that reasonable price of about £40. Anyway, let me show you the end of the box. Look, even the end of the box has been done with the proper Hornby old-fashioned style. So it's the R3822. It's 56025 Smokey Joe Centenary Year Limited Edition, which is pretty cool. And even though the front window here is not a real window, we do have this flap. I'm going to open it for the first time. Now, this I have already done, and it's a bit underwhelming because... <laughs> Ta-da! Now, I bought this from Derails, as you know, and I told him, I said, don't open and test this, and he said, okay, I haven't. So I don't think Dan at Derails is responsible for this this time. Uh, also because the box, this box came in an outer box, which was all wrapped in bubble wrap. So I think this actually came from Hornby like this, which is, well, lackluster, isn't it really? I can just imagine, you know, those people that have bought these as collector's items, hoping that the value will go up in years to come if they don't open them. Yeah, <laughs> we've got to open it now, haven't you? Otherwise it looks like you have already opened it. Anyway, not to worry, it's not a big deal for me at least. As you can see, we have a little bit of history on the model itself. Feel free to pause and read that on the inside of the lid there. I will give you a bit of history on Smokey Joe in just a second anyway. But I think for now we will get this beautiful box, and it is a beautiful box, it's one to keep around, definitely. We'll get this open and see what the loco inside is like. And by the way, it does look, even though it's upside down to you guys, it does look very, very different to the other Smokey Joe model that I've got. Okay. So we've got, oh look, we have a slightly damaged certificate of authenticity here, that's all right. Might have to iron that at some point then. Uh, it's number 350 of a limited run of 2,000. I don't think I realised it was 2,000. I thought it was less than that. So they are, they've done quite a few of these, which is good because if you want one, you should be able to get one as long as you act quite fast. It's not creating too much of a mad rush unnecessarily. And then here we have the operating and maintenance instructions for 040 locomotives. I think this is going to be relatively standard. Yes, it's the 040 chassis that we're all familiar with, although of course the latest iterations of this have had better gearing so that the models run a little bit more slowly. I wonder if this is going to have the original gearing that makes them go super fast as the 1980 release did. I doubt it. I'm going to I'm going to guess not, but who knows. I'm just looking for Rusty so that I can cut the sides of the pack open, so I'll be right back. No, I can't find Rusty, so I'm just going to have to use the old scissors, which sadly don't have a name. All right, here we go. Just cut these off. And there we have Smokey Joe. And wow, I tell you what, the livery on there, I mean, it's not dead glossy. It's really more of a satin finish, but it looks a lot more premium than the other Smokey Joe models I've got to do. So that's awesome. We've got a detail bag here. Let's take a look. Oh, look at this. This is cool. I bet a lot of people that were children in the 80s remember this. We've got Bill and Ben, the little unpainted figures. That's nice. So you can put those into the cab if you'd like to. That's pretty cool. And go on then, let's get Smokey Joe himself. And it is a him, I guess. We've got to call it a he, haven't we? 
And here it is, as I personally have never seen him before. Look, we've got metal handrails all over the model. Now, I thought that Hornby had just updated this for this particular version to make it a bit special, but apparently not. Apparently, the original version did have some of these extra details. I don't know about the paintwork, but the, uh, yeah, the metal handrails certainly did. And just for reference, here is my existing Smokey Joe. Yeah, I mean, the difference is night and day, isn't it? Very, very different. So we've got a lot of differences in livery, as you can see, and the finish as well is totally different. And of course, my existing Smokey Joe doesn't have any of those separately fitted parts, or at least not as many. So the differences there are pretty awesome to see, actually. And the finish, I think, is the, the best part for me. That, that sheen is just wonderful. So we will have a close look at this in just a second, although it won't be too detailed because I know it is still quite a basic model. But I think it does warrant a little bit of a close look because it is quite nicely detailed, as I say. So unlike some starter models, these Hornby Pugs were actually based on a real locomotive known as the Caledonian Railway 264 class, designed by the Scottish engineer Dougal Drummond. They were first introduced as early as 1885 and they were mainly used for shunting. The design was used for nearly 80 years, so very long standing, and these Pugs were still in use way into the 1960s. After grouping though, earlier on they became part of the LMS and later British Railways. From 1948 onwards they sometimes ran with unofficial tenders, although Hornby have never produced any of those as far as I know. In total, 34 of the Pugs were constructed, but none were preserved. The final withdrawal took place in 1962, very sadly. Although Smokey Joe graffiti did really exist in real life on a locomotive, it never existed on number 56025, as far as I know. 56025 in real life didn't really resemble Hornby's model, although it was in BR Black for a time. Hornby's model itself was first introduced in 1980 and it was complete with metal handrails as I was saying. Uh, from 1883 those handrails were removed for a more basic train set version of the model to be made but for the centenary they have been re-added as you can see which is awesome. So there he is then, Smokey Joe up close and personal for you, looking pretty smart actually. I don't think I've ever seen a smarter Smokey Joe than this. I think with this one it is important to remember what the purpose of this model is because obviously usually when Hornby release a new steam locomotive the purpose is that it represents the prototype as accurately and as realistically as possible and I think if you look at this model under that lens obviously it won't come out looking very good but the purpose of course is to recreate a model from Hornby's past in order to provoke nostalgia and I think when you consider that as the purpose behind the model the model looks an awful lot better. Now don't get me wrong there is quite a lot of detail to this compared with other models of Smokey Joe really and you've definitely got the remnants of that Margate quality I mean don't forget these Caledonian pugs have the die cast running plate and the lower cab as well which brings the loco quite a lot of weight this weighs in at 124 grams which is quite a lot more than other Hornby 040s that they have I mean the Santa's Express for example is 88 grams so we're talking 40 odd grams more than that so it's pretty heavy the decoration is beautiful, here's a few close-ups of it, you can see we do have the running number which is now lined, never seen that before on a Smokey Joe and the lining is top notch, it really really is. And you've got the 0P classification above there which again is all nicely lined. The running plate has also got some decoration on it too which is great. Never seen the builder's plate before on a Smokey Joe but you can see that there, I think LMS does that say, hopefully the close-up will show that. And also I really like the way the Smokey Joe nameplate there has been sort of lined. Almost as though it's sort of framing the Smokey Joe graffiti there, as though that's kind of part of the livery, which I guess for Hornby at least it very much is. The smoke box door is fantastic. I mean, it's got that gloss to it, which looks great. You've got the star on the front there picked out. Usually that just sort of blends in quite anonymously with the rest of the smoke box, but it really does improve it, I think, having been painted. And you've got the running number above there. It's worth saying that the handrail above the smoke box door there is just a part of the molding, although we do have the separately fitted ones on the boiler, of course, and also on the back of the cab. This really has been a surprise, learning that the original Smokey Joe actually had some of these details. The decoration also looks quite a lot different to what I'm used to on the buffer beams. As you can see, we have the sort of red area between the buffers. Yeah, that looks very different. I'm pretty sure my other Smokey Joe doesn't have any decoration or any red paint at all on the buffer beams, actually. Uh, so same goes with the back then. So yeah, as you can see, we've got a bit of red paint there as well, which again, just it makes a huge difference, I think, to the loco. Yes, it's not supposed to be that realistic, but some of these features really do help it to look quite realistic. We've got a metal whistle in front of the cab. That is typical of all versions of the model that's a really nice touch of quality and also some metal safety valves in the center of the body there which look fantastic the cab detail is not non-existent there is some molded cab detail there but none of it's been painted or anything 
but I am pretty sure that that was the case also on the 1980 version, so no complaints there. And if you were to paint up and fit the included crew into the cab, I think that would look a lot more realistic, which is great. The wheel set is a little bit more Hornby Railroad-esque, although you can see that the centres of each axle have been blacked out, which is really nice on such an inexpensive model. But the coupling and connecting rods are a little bit on the chunky side with this. But again, this model is not one for you if you're interested in realism. But yeah, for remembering the past, for remembering Smokey Joe as he was in 1980, this model does the perfect job. And of course, it is different from just the old crusty Smokey Joe because it has that slightly glossy livery. So you do have a reason to go out and buy this one if you've already got the original one, I suppose, which is quite nice. So there we go. That is a little look at the detail. It's actually better than I expected. It's very, very impressive, really especially when I'm so used to the more basic Caledonian Pug. It's crazy to think that right at the beginning, before all of these others were made, the model was much more detailed than it is now, which is really cool to find out. Anyway, let's talk about the mechanism. Let's get it down onto the track and give it its first run. Let's see how that goes. So there he is. I want to say sheep, but it is definitely a he. Smoky Joe down onto the track. The bad news is that the mechanism appears to be basically unchanged from the 1980s which is of course completely reasonable. This is supposed to replicate the 1980s model, provided you know that, I think it's okay. And it's also nothing grizzly, like when Bachmann re-released the original J72 with that horrible split chassis. The mechanism on this Loco and other Smokey Joe and Caledonian 040s, they are reasonably competent, I would say. So it won't surprise you to know that we have all-wheel drive and all-wheel pickup. Yeah, I think that's fairly standard. We do just have a three-pole motor inside here, I think. I haven't seen anything that suggests that this has been upgraded to a five-pole motor. However, I have been considering maybe doing a conversion, so I have a super special Smokey Joe with a five-pole motor. So if you'd like to see if that's possible, let me know down in the comments and I will give that a try. Also, we don't have any proper bearings on the wheel set or anything like that. We do have a metal underframe, as you can see here, but the chassis itself, is made of plastic so wear and tear isn't going to be a huge issue there. At the end of the day the mechanism's not a lot to shout about. They were never the most incredible performers in the world but let's see how this one goes. I could be completely wrong. It might be an amazing runner. It will be interesting to see if they've reverted back to the original gearing which made these Smokey Joes so fast which at the end of the day could be one of the reasons why these were so popular because fast locos are fun locos where kids are concerned. But let's try it. Here we go. I think we are. Yeah, we're set forwards. Here we go. Smokey Joe. Look at that. I tell you what, it wasn't slow particularly, but that is pretty darn smooth. What do you reckon to that? That was pretty impressive, I'd say. All right. Yeah, it's actually really smooth. And quite quiet as well. Yeah, it is, it is slow. Yeah, so it does have the more modern gearing, which is fine. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's better, isn't it? It's better. Um, unless you're a kid. I suppose a kid might disagree, but I don't really think this is for kids. This is for people who were kids in 1980, perhaps. All right, but it's not a crawler. I'm going to try. <laughs> I was trying then, but I'll try even harder. See if we can get it to perform properly. Just nudging it up, nudging it up. Saw a bit of a twitch. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, I mean, again, it just goes back to the purpose of these models. These were supposed to be just fun to mess around with. These days, of course, if they were going to do a Caledonian Pug, it would not have this mechanism. And it wouldn't have this price either. It wouldn't be just 40 quid. But I think at the end of the day, this looks great. I mean, it's it's a good looking loco. It's the best looking Smokey Joe I've ever owned. <laughs> I've only owned one other, so it's not saying much. But yeah, it is a good looking loco. If you've got fond memories of the original model, this is a justifiable purchase. It doesn't run badly and it certainly won't run any worse than the originals did. So I don't have a problem with that as long as you know what to expect. And if you've watched the review, I guess, congrats. Now you do know what to expect. Anyway, let's get this running then about 25 minutes in each direction. See how she gets on. He, he. So here he comes at 50% speed then, and as you can see, that is a really nice and controlled speed. So in actual fact, because of that change in gearing, the crawl is most likely better now than it was when the models were new in the 1980s. So in, in that sense, I suppose the mechanism has been improved very slightly. But yeah, there's nothing wrong with the performance at all with those. They are just as good as any other release of the model, which is expected, but I think it's worth saying, isn't it? So I'll let this run in. We'll do a little bit more testing with it in just a second and then maybe couple it up to some, what do you reckon, some vintage wagons that might have been around in the 80s. I think that'll be fun to do. So I'll see you in a minute. 
So there we are then folks, running in is complete. And I have to say, I mean, these are simple locos, so it's not a huge surprise, but there are no problems with this whatsoever. No derailments, it's quieter now than it was. It seems perfectly smooth. Can't fault the performance. A couple of things I didn't mention about the mechanism. No, unfortunately, you can't easily change the couplings. They are sort of part of the chassis and they're certainly not NEM or anything like that. And also no, obviously this is not DCC ready uh, as a lot of Hornby's modern locos are. But the performance is fine. I've also parked her just next to him, him, next to an express point dead zone, which is right there. So I'll just demonstrate that for you, uh, just to show you how reliable the loco is really over points. Now it doesn't crawl that slowly, that's true, but the spacing between the wheels is optimum really for these points. And so, as you can tell, the thing doesn't cut out, which is great. Uh, the crawl, the actual crawl, how is the crawl? I mean, it's not the best. Like I say, I might try and put a five pole motor into this one day, see if we can do any better than that. But, uh, you know, with the speed it does kick in, it's reasonably smooth, so I'm not going to complain too much about that. Again, this is a novelty. Um, I would say the performance is absolutely fine. For £40, I'm certainly not complaining. So, if you were around in the 1980s, at least in the model railway scene, you will recognise some of these vans. I've just put on a couple of each. It's actually quite a few. How many? Two, four, six, eight, ten. Well, there's like 11, so it's not bad for a little loco like this. I measured 0.12 newtons of tractive effort, which should be enough for this to haul around 11 coaches on straight level track. So let's see if it can manage 11 wagons on curved and not level track. Let's see how that gets on. Okay, nice and steady. There we are, I heard the coupling hooks engage. So it's a simple loco, but I think there is a lot to be said to it, even if you're not getting one of these just to put it in the box. If you want something that just works well, I mean, maybe the centenary version is not a good idea, but the Hornby 040s in general, there is a lot to be said for them, I think, because they just work. And they're quite cheap as well, and they're very robust. I mean, there's not a lot not to like about them, really, unless you're a serious modeler, but I don't think any of those will still be watching <laughs> at this point. Let me know if you are. I mean, I appreciate it, of course. There we go. That is lovely. And see how controlled that is. I mean, that's quite a low speed. It's not cutting out on the express points. I mean, I've got far more expensive locos that perform worse than that, actually. So it's not too bad. Unlike some of the older releases of the Caledonian Pug, uh, I've got this one. This was what my first loco ever, actually. That's 50% speed for you. <laughs> so you can see the difference. I think even at full speed, my new Smoky Joe would not be able to go that fast. So yeah, maybe it's less fun, but it's certainly more controllable and Smokey's not gonna be injuring himself when he derails on curves because of the ridiculous speed. So there we go, that's that one with a couple of Caledonian coaches. And my theme for today is going to be Hornby 040 locomotive, so I have yet another Caledonian pug here, but do keep an eye on the sidings and see if you can, well, see if you can spot some others and spot an odd one out. This one's got a bit more of a modern train, which I think is quite nice. There we are, it's uh, Loch Ness, I think it is, that one, number eight. All right, let's catch up with Smokey, see how he's handling those wagons. So that is running absolutely fine. In fact, I'm shocked at how much of a decent loco this actually looks simply by having a couple of extra details fitted and a slightly better paint job. I wouldn't have said that those minor, relatively minor improvements could improve a loco that much, but they seem to have actually, so I mean I could just be talking out of my bottom there, so if you disagree let me know in the comments, but yeah, I mean, just looking at the thing run, it looks superb. And I suppose the same is true with the Caledonian Blue versions to an extent, because they do look good, but they don't have the handrails. So this is a simple model, I mean, for sure. If you're buying this expecting it not to be, you will be disappointed. But for once, I would say the simplicity of this is to the Loco's advantage. It suits its intended purpose perfectly. And as you can tell, it performs really nicely. I'm actually quite impressed with the slow speed there. Don't get me wrong, that's about as slow as it can go. But even so, that is quite pleasant to watch, isn't it? And that's not really something I would ordinarily have said about Smoky Joe's, but... It looks smart, I have to say. It looks beautiful running along. So here are some of my ratings then for the lovely Hornby Centenary Smoky Joe. A quick disclaimer before we get on, obviously my rating system was designed for serious modern locomotives. This loco is a bit of an anomaly. I've tried to be reasonable with my ratings, but at the same time, I don't want to be marking this down for detail massively 
because obviously that's not really very fair to the model. So I'm just doing this for fun really because I always do and people expect it. Obviously, if this was a serious model, I wouldn't be giving the detail a three star. I think it would be less than that. However, I think this model does a good job of recapturing the original 1980 release. And for that, there is something to be said. Although, like I say, if you're looking for a serious model, please don't take this as a three star rating. The performance I've been more accurate with, I would say, I've given it three star. It's actually reasonably smooth at the higher speeds. It just doesn't do a very good crawl, which is obviously something to be aware of. The pulling power actually for a loco of this size isn't too bad. 11 coaches I measured, uh, 0.12 newtons of tractive effort. Yeah, it's not too bad. It's nothing to shout about but it's perfectly fit for purpose. The mechanism I have given a two star, obviously, yeah, there's not a lot going for this, no proper bearings, no flywheel, no five pole motor, doesn't have any NEM couplings, it's just stuck with the big D-type ones, and obviously no DCC either, but for 40 quid or less, if you're lucky enough to get it for less, it is okay for the price. The quality though, five star, the livery application is perfect, I love the amount of metalwork on this model, and it has been assembled to a high standard, so I'm not gonna fault the quality today, and also the value for money, I think because it's a special edition item and it does have the extra detail and the extra livery and the glossy finish, I guess, I'm going to give that five star as well. I'm very happy with this for five stars. I'm glad Hornby didn't do what they could have done and put the price right up because it's something special. Overall then, that is 7.48 out of 10. That's not a bad score, is it? I put it into the logbook. There we go, 18th above the Drummond 700 class and below the Hornby mixed traffic train set. Again, please take this with a pinch of salt. It was saved by the price. If it was more expensive, it wouldn't be this good. And it would have done worse if this model was intended to be serious or accurate. So bear that in mind. Overall though, I'm more than happy with this. Yeah, very, very happy with that. So, yeah, like I say, links below if you want to pick one of them up before they're all gone, you know, even if it sits in the box. For 40 quid, it's not a bad thing to have hanging around, is it, to be honest? And certainly, if you were one of those people to own one of these back in the day, then, yeah, it makes a ton of sense. If you've got good memories, I would say, why not? <laughs> yeah, lovely, really enjoyed that. All right then, folks. Well, I hope you enjoyed that as well. That's the main thing. Uh, let me know in the comments, would you like to see more of Hornby's Centenary range covered? I mean, there are quite a few bits supposed to be coming out along the year, aren't there? So if you'd like to see some of those, let me know. And of course, let me know which ones you'd like to see the most. For now, though, thank you for your company. Thanks for your time. I will see you on Saturday for another video. And of course, on Sunday too, for another live stream. So I'll see you for those. For now, though, you take care and I will see you next time. Cheers, everybody. Cheers, everybody.